special interests. Uh, you can take polls and figure out how to talk to people, how to massage different uh, statements. Uh, but what really counts is who supports your candidacy, who's contributing to your campaign. That's the essence of what this is all about. I'm raising my money from regular New Yorkers who are interested in good government. Uh, I'm the only person you can count on who has a record of independence and will put the interest of New Yorkers over developers, special interests, and build a better New York with all of you. Thank you so much. You know, I've said we're living a tale of two cities because the disparities in this city are unacceptable, unsustainable, don't reflect our values. If we're going to address them, we have to use the tools of this government to actually reach people in need. For example, we need paid sick days for everyone who needs it. Everyone who needs it. And we can't wait to do that. Uh, when I'm mayor, it's my plan to make sure that paid sick days reaches every person in this city in any company with five or more employees now. Not in a few years. Not depending on how the economy is now. That's the difference between me and some candidates. There's a difference between me and some candidates on the ability and the willingness to tax the wealthy. We have to tax the wealthiest New Yorkers so we can fix our schools. If you believe that full day universal pre-K will change our schools, if you believe that we need to commit ourselves to after school for the future of our children, you have to be willing to get the revenue and we can do it by asking the wealthiest New Yorkers to help us finally turn around our schools. Some of my opponents don't believe in taxing the wealthy. We have to change the way we police. We have to bring police and community back together. We need a new police commissioner. We need a strong inspector general. We need to fundamentally reform and change the approach to stop and frisk because it's hurting too many communities in this city. Hold on. I'll finish without it and say, and that's, thank you very much, and that's a difference too. Because if you want to change the police department, you can't keep the same police commissioner in place and expect to change the police department. So I'll finish by saying thank you to everyone who put this together. Thank you to everyone here. Thank you to Ken. There are some real differences. Sure, we're Democrats and we agree on some things. But we have some fundamental differences on the future of this city. And if you agree that the status quo is not working for a huge percentage of New Yorkers and it's not sustainable, then I need your help to change the city. It's something we have to do together. Thank you. Once, ag once again, it's been a real privilege to talk about all these important issues in front of all of you. As I mentioned before, I'm proud to be someone who came to this country, to this city, and, and really uh, to, to have the, the ability to pursue and in many ways achieve the American dream. Uh, Sal always says that he's the only one without, uh, that is not a career politician. I do want to point out that most of my career has not been in politics or government. I, 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 in fact, my training is not in, in government. I'm a humble mathematical physics major who then became <laughs> an actuary for many years. My last firm was the uh, firm called PricewaterhouseCoopers. I wanted to give something back to the city that gave me and my family tremendous opportunities. And that's why I ran for city council in the first place. And, Thought it'd be a few years there. It wound up becoming eight years. Again, I was not going to go beyond eight years uh, in overturning the will of the people. And uh, I ran for city controller instead, and, uh, and I can't believe it's now uh, coming up on four years as city controller. It would be an incredible honor to be able to serve as mayor of, uh, in my humble opinion, the greatest city in the world. Thank you. Professor Cheryl, thank you very much for uh, leading this uh, forum tonight. And thank you, everybody at CFD, for pulling it together. And, as Billy said, for asking us not just one, but a number of questions we've never been asked before at these forums. And we have been to a lot of forums already. So that's a, a good mark, another good mark for CFD. But most importantly, thank you all for coming out tonight. You know, I have been so lucky to get to be Speaker of the City Council for the past seven and a half years. And it's been a way that I've been able to start to pay my debt back to the city of New York. You know, all four of my grandparents, about 100 years ago, came over from Ireland to New York City. They came here having never been here, with no real hope probably they'd ever get to go back to their home country, because they heard that great things could happen here. 
They heard that this was a place, if you ask them, where actually magical things could happen for them and their family. And that's what happened. All of my grandparents got into the middle class. All of their children went to college. All of their grandchildren and some, my sister smarter than me, went to graduate school. That's what New York City can be, a place of opportunity for people. And as speaker, I've worked hard, and as mayor, I've worked hard to make it an even greater place of opportunity. And that means keeping it the safest big city in America, but a place where we police with our communities, not against our communities. It means growing good jobs, as we've done already, bringing manufacturing jobs to the Brooklyn Navy Yard, creating a network of incubators across our city so entrepreneurs can start up new companies and expanding that through further neighborhood-based economic development in places like the South Bronx and Sunset Park and the North Shore of Staten Island. And it means not just saying this is a city for renters, but again, making it a city for renters with the strongest rent protection laws we've ever had in our city. And it means moving our city to a place where every neighborhood has a quality school. And your access to quality education doesn't depend on what zip code you live in. We can do that by taking steps to extend our school day, by expanding full day pre-kindergarten, by building on the success we all had successfully delivering, pre delivering mandatory kindergarten to every school in our city come September. We can come together and do all of that for our city. And I want to thank you for recognizing that what we need in a next mayor isn't somebody who can just criticize and point out things that might not be going well, but somebody who can identify solutions, bring people together in support of those solutions, and get those solutions implemented as I've done as speaker and as I'll do as mayor, working with all of you in the great team that is the city of New York. Again, let me thank CFD for putting together this small forum this evening. <laughs> you know, 2013 is New York City at a crossroads. What direction are we going to go in? Are we going to go down the same path that we've been going down for the last 12 years? No. Four years too long. Let us remember that also. Four years too long. Or are we going to go down a different path? A path that keeps New York City safe at the same point while we protect our constitutional rights and make sure that things like stop and frisk aren't abused and misused. Are we going to go down a path where our education, our education system continues to focus on standardized testing that doesn't focus on comprehension and critical thinking? A system that continues to fail our students. We see right now almost 80% of our young people who graduate can't do college-level work. There's something wrong. Are we going to go down the same path that builds more luxury housing? Or are we going to focus on rebuilding our housing authority, making sure we build affordable housing across the city of New York for all New Yorkers so that we can afford to stay in the city that we love? Are we going to continue to go down the path that gets rid of small businesses and changes the flavor and nature of communities in the businesses that come in, chain stores and so many other things. What direction is New York City going to go in in 2013? I served as controller for eight years. I chose not to run again after my second term. Instead, I ran against the richest person in the city of New York, Mike Luber. I know what it's like to stand up and take on the fight and represent the people of this city. I want to be your mayor and stand up and represent all New Yorkers. We haven't had a mayor in 20 years who's represented all New Yorkers. 20 years. It is time that we had someone in City Hall who will work for us, who will stand up and fight for us. I believe I'm, I'm that person. Westside, CFD, I need your help. With your help, there is absolutely no doubt I'll be the next mayor of the City of New York, and we will have someone in City Hall who will work and represent all New Yorkers again. Thank you so much. Thank you.